1268. That's been a fun show already, uh, dealing with a few technical issues here in studio. Nothing to be worried about because we've got innovators here in studio with us. We've got innovators on the line. We're going to try this one more time with Mike Maddock of Maddock Innovation. Uh, Mike, welcome to Get Down to Business. You know what? We seem to be having that technical issue continue. So we're going to have Mike Maddock back on the show uh, one of these weeks. It appears that we're not getting phone calls. So all of you callers about innovation, it seems that, uh, that we might have to innovate in order to get you back on next week. Uh, so we're thrilled that we have here in studio. We don't need to deal with the technology. We've got Rick Levin uh, who's joining us. Uh, Rick, no technical issues getting into the studio today, huh? I'm an old-time guy. Glad I showed up. <laughs> Apparently, it worked out well. So Rick is, uh, has, has a law firm downtown, but it sounds like the thing that you're, what, one of the things that you're most passionate about, and everything in business is about passion, is about your, uh, your academic career in, in teaching uh, law school students at Northwestern University. Tell us a little bit about that. I've been teaching at Northwestern since approximately uh, 1998. Cute little story that starts it. Uh, got an, a letter out of the blue to start teaching there because I had known somebody, and I was all excited. I started crying, and I called my parents in Boca Raton, and they're you know so excited because they can tell everybody at their pool that their son's a professor there. And my eyes are, I'm literally bawling tears. And my partner walks in and he goes, what's going on? I said, I just got named a professor at Northwestern. You're never going to believe that. And he looks at me and says, it's really funny because if you applied there, you could never get in. And, <laughs> well, most and, people don't have that story of just getting a letter <laughs> randomly. Wow. And the fact is I completely understand why, because they're the smartest students in the world. They're amazing. That's great. So uh, are you uh, a full-time uh, educator at, I, at Northwestern? I'm, a, I'm actually considered part-time adjunct. Uh, I do it pro bono, probably work anywhere from 20 to 60 hours a week doing wow. it. I coach, uh, I teach three different classes. I teach introduction to trial advocacy, advanced trial advocacy, and I coach our national trial team, which won the national championship and was number one in the country uh, three years ago. So there must be a reason that Northwestern uh, reached out to you to, uh, to ask you to teach. They uh, needed somebody below the academic level. I have a feeling that that's because of your professional career and looking at your uh, your bio over here, it's pretty impressive. Uh, primarily, you're in the business of medical malpractice and, and some personal injury work. Uh, firm is downtown? Firm's downtown. It's called Levin Reback Law Group. We're in the Goodman Theater building at 60 West Randolph, and we spe- we concentrate in all areas of personal injury. We do construction work. Sadly, wrongful death, medical malpractice mainly. So, but we run the gamut of all type, types of personal injury. And you could hurt me for this question after I ask I it. But how it. long have you been? How long have you been practicing? <laughs> totally fine. Uh, Twenty eight years, and I know that I don't look at those. So that's that's why you're so sh- there, you know shocked. There we go. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, Rick, tell me how things have changed from the time that you started in this practice to how things are now. I have a feeling that medical malpractice a different business now it, than it was. It. It's actually evolved, in my view, to become even fairer to even the playing field because of the laws. I think that it, uh, when I first started, there weren't laws in place that anybody could bring a medical malpractice lawsuit against a doctor, and there was nothing in place until the very end, and then a doctor would possibly have a, a false lawsuit brought against him or her. But back in the late 80s, early 90s, they've evolved the laws so that if you want to bring a case against every single named defendant in a malpractice case, you have to have an affidavit of a reviewing physician saying that physician made a mistake. And that's standard across the country. And I think that that's done a good job of keeping the number of lawsuits down against doctors and evening the playing field so that they know at the beginning that there's a legitimate case. And uh, I noticed on your site that there was more than one Levin listed over there. Yeah, my brother works for me. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> my brother and I are partners. We also have another partner, Adam Reback and Robert Edelman. And just, you know, the whole time here you've been talking about networking. Adam Reback started with our firm. It's an amazing story. He came in one day when my son was one year old for an interview as a law clerk and never left. Went from being a law clerk to an associate to the senior associate to a junior partner to partner to named partner. My other partner, Robert Edelman, happened to have been one of my students when I taught evidence at DePaul back in the 90s. He came in for an interview after being out about two years, worked his way up to senior associate and now partner. So That's an amazing really nice story, family. And, and that is the story of, of success. So let me sort of get into the, uh, the meat and potatoes over here. Uh, 
law, and you also spend a lot of time in 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 the world of uh, medicine. I guess you're you're dealing yes. quite a bit with a lot of folks. I what spend if- more time in medicine actually than in law. I'm not kidding you. You have to learn the medicine to be a good lawyer. But you you haven't gotten a, a letter from uh, any of the medical no. schools offering you a teaching position. That's probably it's a, a good thing. <laughs> it's actually fun when I get to speak to doctors about malpractice and try to give them some decent legal advice of things that they are always told not to do that actually would help smooth things out for them. So so tell me, uh, <clears throat> is is law a good profession for I, somebody to go into now? I love being a lawyer. Love it. I think it is the greatest profession in the world. I have met so many people. My wife and I actually, although not legally, have adopted one of our old clients, one of my old clients whose father was killed in a police pursuit case, uh, in a police pursuit back in 1995. And Michael uh, is African American out of the projects. Uh, He has actually become part of our family, stood up at all my boys' bar mitzvahs. My boys consider him his brother. I consider him my son. And, you know, so from something like that, when you are so impassioned about something, you can connect with your clients and they can become part of you. So to me, it's the greatest field in the world if you want to help people. What about all the all the kids out there that are coming out of law school, maybe not a law school like Northwestern, but out of a lot of law schools and can't seem to find a job? I actually think Northwestern is a great example because my students get the most amazingly high paid jobs. They get jobs for $160,000. They get their bar exam paid for. They get a bonus. I want to say somewhere between ten and twenty thousand dollars. And unfortunately, they find themselves working in warehouses doing document review for years, and they never get to use the oral advocacy skills that I taught them in law school. And all of it goes away. It's kind of like being a track runner in undergrad, and then you don't run for five years, and you try to go out and run five miles, and you can't even make it a mile. And it. So what I always try to advocate to my students is do what you went to law school to do. Go be a public defender, be a plaintiff's personal injury, a state's attorney, something that's going to give you litigation experience. And then what your prime earning years are somewhere between 35 and 50. Don't worry about the money now. Look at it like a doctor does, like your internship, your residency. And then by the time 35 rolls around, you've developed all your oral skills, and then people are going to want you, and you're going to be an amazing lawyer. And it's at that point that you'll be able to make some serious money if that's your want, if that's your desire. What about volunteering? Uh, A lot of people uh, talk about how volunteering is how they land the job of their dreams. Yeah, I think volunteering is one of the most important things. Uh, I always tell my students, uh, it's probably not until the last two years, I've probably given well over 100 speeches in my career it's probably not until the last two years that I've actually been asked to speak. So here I am. I have my own practice. I'm a teacher at Northwestern where I won best professor five different times, and I have to volunteer to ask to give speeches. And the point of the matter is that I try to tell my students is we're all a dime a dozen. So get out there, put your name out there by making phone calls. You may see a speech is coming up or a whole lecture series. Say, hey, can I get in there? and give a lecture? Can I speak on a certain topic? Uh, It could be that there's something going on in the pro bono area. Call up and volunteer. And it works that way, not only for the business and and for the profession of law, but really I I tell everybody who listens to the show, to everybody who I talk to, uh, that it's all about volunteering, that it's all about networking your way into positions. And that is the that is the difference between uh, you know between somebody who gets somewhere in life, somebody who's all about giving, somebody who's all about trying to push things to the next level, trying to grow. Uh, and 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 when you do that, you'll often meet some of the some like minded people, people that care about similar things as you, uh, and people that uh, that that are also uh, charitable and giving and things like that. And I've I've you know, gotten in touch with some of the most amazing people because of that. I I think that the concept that you've just talked about is probably the most important because if you're going to be going and volunteering for something, it's probably something you're passionate about. And for example, the volunteering that my partner, Adam and I, Adam Rebeck and I do the most of is coaching our trial team. And we have eight students from Northwestern that we pick that are going to be trial lawyers that get involved in a mock trial and we mentor them for usually four different semesters. They come to my house every weekend. They become part of our family. And by the time 
two years have rolled around. Not only are they are our ma- are they our amazing friends, but they are seasoned litigators with experience well beyond that of a ten year lawyer. Well, once again, we're talking with. Uh, with Rick Levin of Levin Rebeck, a law firm in the city, teacher at Northwestern, and clearly a passion, uh, passionate advocate for uh, for the legal uh, field. We're going to continue the conversation after the break uh, about uh, innovation, about entrepreneurship, about law, uh, something that we talk a little bit about, but it sounds like you're the perfect guest. Once again, you're listening to Get Down to Business. After the break, more conversation with Rick Levin. We've now opened the... 